How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at colloids. Our objectives will be to basically explain what a colloid is and what are those properties associated with them. So let's talk about mixtures. We know we got homogeneous mixtures such as solutions. We got heterogeneous mixtures as well. So homogeneous mixtures, uniform throughout. I take a little sip of my uh, lemonade off the top. It's going to be the same as the last one that I take out of because it's a homogeneous solution. Right, same composition throughout. Heterogeneous mixtures, not so much. They're non-uniform throughout. So if I had a bowl of cereal, you know, I got some marshmallows in there, I got some oat, something or other in there, and I'm taking a spoonful. Hey, I didn't get a single marshmallow in that bite. And then I take another one. Hey, a bunch of marshmallows in that. It's not uniform throughout. So, you know, an example of a heterogeneous mixture. In this image, I got a test tube of dirt water, some mud, right? You might look at it initially, especially after you shake it up and go, hey, that looks like it's the same thing throughout. But if you give it time, you'll see those particles settle out. That's a, one of the other major differences. Homogeneous mixtures, particles won't separate from solution. They dissolve and they're small and they'll stay suspended. They're not gonna separate. But in heterogeneous mixtures, over time, they will. Even if it looks like initially they might be homogeneous, if you give it some time, um, the particles are too big, they won't stay in the solution, and they'll precipitate out, they'll form at the bottom, right? Um, now, those are two ends of the spectrum, homogeneous solutions on one end, heterogeneous mixtures on the other, and what we got, like right in the middle, colloids, all right? So colloids, what are they? They're also called colloidal dispersions, or colloids. Uh, basically, you got a mixture where the particles are larger than your typical molecules, but they're not so large that gravity will separate them from the mixture and they're dispersed. So an example could be milk. So milk's a mixture of proteins, fats, and sugars, and proteins and fats tend to be very large molecules. But, you know, a glass of milk, you leave it on the counter, it might get warm and smell gross after a while, but those things still stay suspended in that mixture. All right, so colloids can be a mixture of solids, they can be a mixture of liquids, they can be mixtures of gases, it can be any phase mixed together, all right? And they usually appear cloudy or opaque. Just think a glass of milk, you know, because it's all the proteins and fats and stuff in there. When you look at it, you can't see through it onto the other side, it's opaque. Um, yeah, another cool feature or property of colloids is that they scatter light as the light travels through them. So this is called the Tyndall effect, and it makes it possible to see light beams. Like in this image, you could see, hey, I can kind of see the light beams coming through the shadows. That is the Tyndall effect. There are either dust particles that are suspended in the air, or maybe it's a, a fog. It's these large molecules suspended in the gaseous solvent hanging out there, scattering light. All right, so hydrophilic and hydrophobic. All right. So hydrophilic means water loving, right? Hydro means water, file means to like, so it's water loving. Uh, when these particles are placed in water, their hydrophilic regions want to interact with water and any hydrophobic regions or uh, water fearful regions are usually found on the interior. So here I have a molecule where I have some polar regions that would be hydrophilic. They want to hang out with water, but then like the rest of this is pretty nonpolar and it's not really gonna wanna hang out with water. So I did a little stick diagram of what that might look like, the blue being the hydrophilic. You put it in water, those blue parts are gonna wanna hang out with the water, but the rest of the molecule is gonna kinda try to scrunch up. So when you got these really big proteins, let's say, they're gonna end up fall, folding and minimizing contact with water and it's hydrophilic or hydrophobic regions. The water, hydrophilic regions want to hang out with water, hydrophobic, we're going to try to shy away. So when we get to hydrophobic colloids, for example, like dirt, oil, grease, that kind of stuff, it's going to be hydrophobic. So hydro, again, water, phobic means fearing. So we need to stabilize these hydrophobic particles in water somehow, right? So one way is through adsorption. Now, adsorption not absorption ad adheres or sticks to the surface right so if we had some ions that might adhere to the surface of these particles uh well if we did that these particles would be repelled from each other because they have the same negative charge and that's going to keep them separated it's going to keep them suspended in the water so the ions are adsorbed to the surface and they can help keep large particles separated 
continued hydrophobic colloids. Many soaps contain this compound called sodium stearate. One end of it is hydrophobic. So if I take a look at this whole region of the molecule, it's pretty hydrophobic. It's nonpolar, it's not gonna interact with water, it's afraid of water. But then this end is charged. And, and I'm sorry, I can't write and talk. So it's charged, so it's gonna be hydrophilic. It's gonna like the water. So when we put them in water with oil or grease, interesting stuff is going to happen. Let's take a look. So when stearate is mixed with oil and dirt and water, what happens is the hydrophobic part wants to hang out with the oil. So this whole region wants to hang out with the oil, but this region wants to hang out with the water. So the hydrophilic part is gonna end up sticking out and we get something that looks like this. What's really cool about this is now we have an exterior that is hydrophilic and wants to hang out with water. So the water is gonna be like, yeah, let's hang out. Now that whole uh, particle is gonna be suspended in water. If you ever tried washing stains out with just water, not so good. But if you throw in some soap, this is what happens. The soap particles start absorbing into the oil, but the outside part hangs out with the water and you suspend that whole particle and can wash it away, right? Pretty neat. So colloids and digestion. We eat fat, we need fat as a part of our diet. Maybe not a huge part of our diet, but we still need some fat in our diet. And our digestive system needs to be able to break it down. Uh, that's the job of bile from the gallbladder. So bile's gonna act like stearate. If we didn't have bile and we uh, consume the fat, the fat in our digestive system would just kind of clump together and we wouldn't be able to dissolve it and then digest it. So bile is gonna help emulsify and break apart those fat particles so that they can then be uh, broken down and digested. So instead of having this huge ball of fat, bile is gonna break it up into smaller little droplets, suspend it in our digestive system so that it can be digested. So summarize, can you explain what a colloid is and what their properties are? I hope so. Hope you found it helpful. See you in class, goodbye. Okay,